Hi everyone and welcome to this week's Tech Tip. My name is Hannah, I'm a software specialist here at Stricksoft Solutions and for today what I had in mind is to talk about uh, is ceilings. We've received a lot of questions about ceilings, so I thought it might be a good idea to have a quick tech tip about this. However, I do encourage you to check out a webinar that happened recently about ceilings. It's gonna, it's a more detailed uh, webinar. This is going to be really quick and it's only going to cover the basics. So to start, you're going to need a ceiling. Uh, to create a ceiling, you would have to go to architecture, ceiling, and there's two types. There's an automatic ceiling and there's sketch ceiling. On my end, I used sketch ceiling because I didn't have any walls. I just created the ceiling on its own. So I use this technique. And here we are. I have already pre-created two ceilings. I just want to talk to you about the out-of-the-box families that uh, you would uh, receive from Revit, actually. So these are the types of ceilings that you have out of the box from Revit. There's generic, there's these two, and I'm using the gypsum wallboard on metal stud. They are all MWF compatible. So this is the type of ceiling that I'm going to be using. I just want to add that you can also create a ceiling from lines, but this is not the scope of this tech tip. But to start, you have to switch to the floor module. This is the module that I'm using now. And here I would like to add that the floor module is the module that we would use for ceilings and for roofs as well. So here to create a ceiling, there's two, uh, two ways to create a ceiling. One way is to use create. So I would select the ceiling of my choice and I would click on create. Here, this takes us to selecting a template. You can start with the light gauge template. Uh, this is a good starting point, and then you would go in and specify the families of your choice. I have already done that, so I'm going to use my own pre-created template. For now, I'm not going to select frame it now because I just want to show you what happens uh, before you frame it. I just want to click on create and take a look at what happened here. First of all, you'll notice that we have lines all around. These are boundary lines, and this is actually what controls um, the area where the panel is being created. The other thing that controls that is the boundary nodes that were just generated right here. So also, if you wanted to move these, you could. Uh, you would be moving the, the edge of the panel. The other thing you'll notice is this generic model that was also generated. This is the arrow. This is how you would control the direction of the panel. And you'll also notice that we have this panel that was created. This is a ceiling panel and it has a unique number for the ceiling panel. To see the paneling, we have to select uh, one of them and then we would regenerate. And here we are. This is the template that I'm using. I just want to point out one thing. If you go to properties, if you have selected an out-of-the-box option, just remember that you have to go over a few things. First of all, you have to change um, the families. I'm using a Howick 362S for this example. So just remember that you would have to change it in the following places. For the start track and end track, you have to change it for your end joists, side tracks, joist, and I'm also adding sheathing on my end. So I just wanna show you how this looks. I don't have anything at the top, but I've added sheathing at the bottom because this is a ceiling. I've enabled sheathing with this tick. I've added one layer. I'm using the default, and I really didn't change any of the default settings over here, but you could, uh, if you like, you can check a webinar on this. I just use the default. I'm just gonna click on okay and okay. So this is where you would switch your families. By going to properties, and you would go to template and save as. I have already done that before. So if you've already created a template map, uh, which is the second technique that you would use to create a ceiling. On my end, I already created a template map, but if you haven't, you would select a plus sign, you would give it a name, and it's gonna show up here. So I have already created one. If I click here on the plus sign, I would add a template map. I would choose the ceiling type and choose the template that I want to use for that type. Because I don't want to use this, I'm going to delete it. And for this one, I'm going to 
actually frame it now. So I'm going to have this ticked and I'm going to click on OK. And this is the second method of how you would create uh, a ceiling panel, which is to use Quick Create. Quick Create is used in conjunction with the template map. You'll notice that in this example, I had already created openings. That's why it's showing up with openings. So on one side, I had created a shaft. And uh, to create a shaft, you would go to architecture and you would find a shaft right here. So this is how you would create a shaft. The other opening that I have pre-created, I just want to select that ceiling, filter, check none. I'm going to select that ceiling and click edit boundary. So this ceiling was created with uh, two loops, uh, which will create an opening within the ceiling. MWF will recognize these two elements and it will frame around them. So now I want to talk to you about this right here. This is the opening marker. It's a generic model that is created with MWF. And if you click on properties, we have two types light gauge joist supported, light gauge rim supported. This is what we're covering for today. I'm going to assign this one to be joist supported. And this one is going to be the other one. Properties. And this one is going to be rim supported. And if I regenerate, you'll see the difference. If I look here from the top view, you'll notice the difference right away. This one here has a trimmer. This one here doesn't. There's actually a partial joist and this header is going to extend all the way here to this joist and this joist. So this is the difference between these two types of openings. To change the families for these openings, you're gonna have to do that from here. Uh, you would go to uh, Opening Manager, and you can access this from here. You would select Modify, and this is where you would have to change that family to the Howick that I'm using right now, or any family of your choice. The same thing would have to happen for the, the other one, the rim supported as well. Just make sure you're using the right families as well. The last thing I wanted to talk to you about before we conclude this tech tip is what if we have a ceiling that doesn't have an opening and then suddenly we have an opening. So what do we do? I'm going to copy this shaft from here to here really quick. So the correct technique some clients think that we have to click the regenerate button. That's actually incorrect. What we have to do is select the ceiling, go to update profile, and then there's one more step we have to do, but we can already see that the nodes and the lines um, and this uh, opening marker have been generated. I just have to select one member of the panel click on regenerate and the opening is going to get updated. That's it for this week's tech tip. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you next week. Thanks everyone.